In this demo, I'm going to show you how to export data from any web page using a tool called import.io. I am interested in analyzing this list of beer. I love drinking beer and I want to see which ones are most popular based on style, which particular brewery tends to have the most beers in this list of top 250, as well as a few other factors. So we have to first get this data out of this particular form. I mean, we could try to copy and paste it, but you can see it's gonna be quite messy. We have all sorts of different fields within each of these lines. We have our beer name, the brewery, the style, alcohol content, review, and so on. So in order to get all this stuff out of this web page and into, let's say an Excel or a CSV file, we have to use this tool called import.io and it's super easy to use. So we'll go ahead and either sign up or log in. Since I already have an account, I'll log in. Once you get yourself all logged in, go ahead to the top right corner, click on new. And you have these different options for extracting data. Let's give this magic one a shot. So the magic import.io tool basically pulls from a URL. So I'll copy this URL from this website called Beer Advocate, which contains all sorts of beer related metrics. Simply paste it up here and press extract data. And now it's going to pull the HTML for that page and try to parse out each of the individual columns. And as you can see, the algorithm they're using is awesome. It was able to detect all the different breaks inside of that code, uh, as well as how it repeated throughout the entire page and figured out this is probably the data you're looking for. So we have the ranking, the beer name, the brewery, style, alcohol content. We're gonna to need to clean this one up. You can see that this forward slash came in as well. We have the ABV, alcohol by volume the average review, the number of reviews, and the number of people that have actually had this. So let's go ahead and download this as a CSV file. Okay, so now that it's downloaded, let's just open it up to make sure it all looks good. And I'll quickly go through and rename each of these column headers so it makes a little more sense inside of Tableau. Okay, so I've gone ahead and renamed all of the relevant column headers. And there's some extra columns in here. I'm just gonna get rid of those now. It just pulled in some extra junk there. So I'll just highlight the whole column, delete it. Get rid of this one. And now we have some good data. Um, we can see that this is actually broken out automatically, the numbers for the alcohol by volume. But just in case, I'm going to do a find replace to remove the forward slash and space as well as the ABV. So I'll do a control F, find forward slash space, replace with nothing. So we'll do replace all, drops all that. And now we'll do space ABV. And that's gonna capture this part right here. So we'll exchange all of those. And now we get some clean values. So let's go ahead and now save this file. Okay. And let's go ahead and get this into Tableau. All right, so now that we're in Tableau, let's go ahead and connect to our recently downloaded data file, which contains the top 250 beers. And because it's a CSV, we're using text file, not Excel. All right, everything came over, it's looking good. And we can see here that this particular column should be renamed. Let's just go ahead and call this ABV percentage. Missed that one. So now that's been renamed. I think we're good to go. Let's go to sheet one. And first things first, let's rename our sheet top 250 top brewer. So we're trying to figure out what the top brewer is out of this entire list. So let's first add in 
the brewery. And the number of records. The number of records simply represents the number of times this particular brewery is mentioned in that list of the top 250. So now that we have our list, let's go ahead and sort this descending so we can easily see which ones have the highest number of occurrences inside of our file. So we have Trillium, Hill Farmstead, and Treehouse right there at the top. They have quite a proportion of the 250 right there. And if we want to see the actual percentage that these guys control of this entire list of 250, we just come down to our marks card. We'll right click and do a quick table calculation. Percent of total. So we can see that Trillium has 7.2% of the entire list. Hill Farm said 6.8 and Treehouse with 6%. And if we highlight each of these cells by pressing control and clicking, and then reference the bottom left hand of our screen, we can see that the total sum is 20%, which is substantial. That means one in five beers on this list is one of those three breweries. All right. So now that we have our numbers, let's translate this into a bar chart. We can see immediately that Treehouse, Hill Farmstead, and, and Trillium are right there on top. Nobody can really compete with them as we scroll down. You know, we got a couple breweries here with their one-hit wonder beer. They got lucky, but they're not pumping out consistent beers like the breweries up top, which are constantly being rated so highly. Okay, now let's take a look at all of our beers as a whole using a tree map. Before we couldn't actually see everything on one screen. Using a tree map now we can. So based on the size of our square, that represents the number of records inside of our file. Bigger the square, the more beers that are hitting that top 250. Okay, so next up, let's go ahead and take a look at the top styles of beer. So which ones are getting ranked the highest? And now we have the number of records for each particular style. We'll translate that to a percent of total. And boom, right there we can see that these two particular styles of beer are dominating, it looks like, almost exactly 50% of that list, which is crazy. So these two styles are very popular among beer drinkers, and they're ranked very highly. Let's go ahead and turn this into a tree map. And you can see visually now that those two blocks take up exactly 50% combined. And then we have the other styles, American IPA, and so on, which are just, they can't even compare. So I'll just rename this to Top Styles. And next up, let's go ahead and analyze the strength of the beer, so the alcohol by volume. Strong, strongest breweries, so strongest brewery. Now, in order to compute the strength of a beer, we need to add the alcohol by volume percentage. Brewery. And currently we're using a summation of the alcohol by volume percentage. So it's really not giving us accurate numbers at this point. 
it's just showing us the total. So let's change this to be an average so we can actually get some real concrete numbers we can use for analysis. Right click, measure an average. And now we can see right to left or left to right the outliers. So the companies that are cranking out very strong beer. Let's sort this by field and the average ABV percentage. And now we have a nice rolling alcohol volume percentage. And it's led by the Boston Beer Company or Sam Adams which has this one beer, I believe it's called Utopias. Uh, in order to verify that, we'll just take the beer name and drop that into the tooltip. So when we hover over, we can see that, yep, it's the Utopias. So they do have a very strong beer. They're not really a strong brewery when it comes to cranking out quality beers. So see, only one particular beer made this top 250 list. Whereas the ones to the right, have four, three beers, so now let's go ahead and add in the rank. So if you hover over, we can see that the brewery is ranked 150 out of 250. All right, so now let's change the color so we can easily see the hot spots. So who brews the highest number of quality beers? And that way we can identify the alcohol percentage sweet spot. So let's change this to temperature diverging. So it's essentially calling out the hot spots. And as we look to our right, we can see that there's three particular breweries that are really cranking out a high volume of beer that's ranked well. And they're all sort of in the same average alcohol by volume categories. So sitting just around 8%, just below 8%, You can see there 0 0.0795, which is rounding up to 8%. So if you want to make a beer that's going to be well received, you probably want to aim for 8%. And you can see it trails off. And the biggest proportion of beers are right around that area. So between, I would say seven and 9%. Okay, let's create one more sheet here to identify the number of times beers are actually consumed and rated. So the had count. And let's compare that with the score that was received. So the average score that people gave these beers. And this way we can easily create a scatter plot and identify the outliers. So we'll, we'll add hads to this chart, followed by the score. And currently it's just doing a summation of both. So we have to add one more dimension to measure this. So we'll add in our beer name in order to plot all the beers on this particular chart. Okay, so we can see on the y-axis, we have the number of hads. So the, the most popular beer as far as accessibility is the Founders Breakfast Stout. Also scored very well, 4.47. Pliny the Elder. Sculpin IPA. And as you move down the list, we see the beers that are harder to find. So let's create a better visual by right clicking and changing the access we're looking at because nothing's being scored below the 4.5 or the 4.4 okay so it looks like the lowest was around 4.3 and now we have some data we, where we can easily see our outliers up here the founders which is very accessible to all the way down here in the bottom right or almost no one's had these beers but they're ranked very well so this is the, the unicorn category where they're almost impossible to find. But when you do get them, you enjoy them.
So the Good Morning, which is a Treehouse Brewing Company beer, Kentucky Brunch Brand Stout. And the Morning Delight. Very hard to find, very well received. So now we can use our data and actually find beer that's accessible that's high quality. So all these beers in this top section, they're pretty accessible depending upon where you're living and they're high quality beer. So anywhere around in this section, you can visually see those are the beers to go after if you're looking for high quality and also accessible. The ones down here, if you can get a hold of them, go for it. But as far as your everyday quality beer, you're probably going to find most of those in the top section. And that's how you use import.io to export web-based data and use Tableau for your analysis.